The Lebanese forces Arabic al Qudwt al Lebanon is a Lebanese political party and formerly Christian militia during the Lebanese Civil War. It currently holds eight of the 64 Christian seats in Lebanon's parliament and is therefore the second largest Christian party in parliament. The Lebanese forces were originally created in 1976 as an umbrella organization coordinating all the right-wing party militias of the Lebanese Front, mainly composed of the Kotaib party. After the assassination of Bajir Gamal, a few uprisings led to Jijia taking over and dissolving the Lebanese Front, later developing into a separate organization from those parties in the early 1990s. The party was led by Samir Jijia, former commander-in-chief of the armed organization. The organization was created by the Gamals, Kamil Shamoun, and other party leaders during the Lebanese Civil War. It was initially a conglomerate of the various right-wing party militias, placed under the control of a council composed of various party representatives. The Kotaib regulatory forces provided the largest share of fighters and the Kotaib had the largest share on the council. Despite its original creation from party militias, the Lebanese forces accepted new recruits without any specific party allegiance. The movement fought at the main Lebanese resistance within the Christian-dominated Lebanese Front. 1. During the Civil War, the Lebanese forces fought different opponents at different times the Palestinian Liberation Organization, the LNM, the LNRF, the Syrian Army, the Druze-dominated PSP and the Chauf, and the Lebanese Army loyal to General Awan. In the mid-1980s, Political friction within the Lebanese Front resulted in growing distance between the Kotaib militants and the rest of the Lebanese forces. In the end the Lebanese forces and Kotaib became two separate forces within the Lebanese Front. After the civil war ended, Sumer Jijia created the Lebanese Forces Party. In 1994, while Lebanon was under Syrian occupation the party was banned, Jijia imprisoned and the activities of its militants repressed by the Lebanese services in Lebanon. The Lebanese forces returned as a political force after the Cedar Revolution in early 2005, which resulted in a withdrawal of Syrian troops from Lebanon. Soon after, Jijia was subsequently released from prison and continues to lead the party today. 234. History Lebanese Forces Lebanese Resistance 1976-1990 Main Article Lebanese Forces Militia Formation The Lebanese Front was informally organized in January 1976 under the leadership of Bashir's father, Pierre Gamil and Camille Shamoun. It began as a simple coordination or joint command between the predominantly Christian Kotaib Party Kotaib Regulatory Forces KRF. Thai's team of commandos TTC, R. Tigers Militia, Al Tanzim, Marada Brigade, and Lebanese Renewal Party Guardians of the Cedars Go Sea Parties and their respective military wings. The main reason behind the formation of the Lebanese Front was to strengthen the Christian side against the challenge presented by the Lebanese National Movement LNM, an umbrella alliance of leftist Muslim parties militias backed by the Palestine Liberation Organization PLO and Rejectionist Front Palestinian guerrilla factions. Christian East Beirut was ringed by heavily fortified Palestinian camps from which kidnappings and sniping against Lebanese civilians became a daily routine. Christian East Beirut became besieged by the PLO camps, with severe shortages of food and fuel. This unbearable situation was remedied by the Kotaib regulatory forces most notably the BG squad that was led by Bachir and their allied Christian militias as they besieged the Palestinian camps embedded in Christian East Beirut one at a time and brought them down. The first was on January 18, 1976 when the heavily fortified Quarantina camp, located near the strategic Beirut harbor was invaded about 1,000 PLO fighters and civilians were killed. 
5. The Palestinian PLO and al Saqqa forces retaliated by attacking the isolated defenseless Christian town of Timur about 20 miles south of Beirut on the coast. During the Damour massacre in which 1,000 Christian civilians were killed and 5,000 were sent fleeing north by boat, since all roads were blocked off. 6. The Maronites retaliated with the invasion of the largest and strongest Palestinian refugee camp, Telephone al zadar that same year. 7. Bachir, with his KRF militia units, also fought against the PLO and LNM militias at the Battle of the Hotels in central Beirut. The most important battle won by the Falange for the control of the hotel district was the fighting over the possession of the Holiday Inn, due to its important strategic location. Before that battle, the Holiday Inn had been occupied by the PLO. 8. The Lebanese forces was soon after established with an agreement that the direct military commander would be a Qatayb member and the vice commander an R member. Bachir led his troops in the infamous Hundred Days War in Lebanon in 1978, in which the Lebanese forces successfully resisted the Syrian shelling and attacking of eastern Beirut for about three months before an Arab brokered agreement forced the Syrians to end the siege. Syrians took high buildings such as Burj Rizkakrafai and Burj Al Mar using snipers and heavy weapons against civilians. The soldiers stayed for 90 days. Another major clash took place near the Sodeco area in Akrifai where the Lebanese forces fought ferociously and led the Syrian army out of the Rizk building. Not at this time, Israel was the primary backer of the Lebanese Front's militia. In July 1980, following months of intra-Christian clashes between the Tigers, the militia of Dani, and the Phalangists, who by now were under the complete leadership of Bajar Gamal, the Phalangists launched an operation in an attempt to stop the clashes within the Christian areas, and to unite all the Christian militias under Gamal's command. This operation resulted in a massacre of tens of Tigers members at the Marine Beach Resort in Sefra, 25 kilometers north of Beirut. Camille Shamoun's silence was interpreted as acceptance of Gamal's controls because he felt that the Tigers led by his son were getting out of his control. 10. In 1981 at Zal in the Becca, the largest Christian town in the East, confronted one of the biggest battles both military and political between the Lebanese forces and the Syrian occupying forces. The Lebanese forces was able to confront them even though there was a big mismatch in military capabilities and was able to reverse the result of the Battle of 1981. This victory was due to the bravery of the inhabitants and 92 Lebanese forces soldiers LF Special Forces the Mekawir sent from Beirut. The Syrian occupying forces used all kind of weapons heavy artillery, tanks, warplanes against a peaceful town, and they cut all kind of backup that may come from the mountain. Regardless of the very bad weather and heavy bombing, convoys were sent in the snow to Zal. Two Lebanese forces soldiers died on a hill due to bad weather, they were found later holding each other till they died. The Battle of Zal gave the Lebanese cause a new perspective in the international communities, and the victory was both military and diplomatic. It made the leadership of President Bashir Gamal much stronger because of his leadership and important role in this battle. The battle started in April 2, 1981, and finished with a ceasefire and Lebanese police were sent to Zal. The 92 Lebanese forces heroes returned to Beirut on July 1, 1981. 11. Under President Bashir Gamal 1976-1982 Christian East Beirut was ringed by heavily fortified Palestinian camps from which kidnappings and sniping against Lebanese civilians became a daily routine. Christian East Beirut became besieged by the PLO camps, with severe shortages of food and fuel. This unbearable situation was remedied by the Qatayb regulatory forces most notably the BG squad that was led by Bachir and their allied Christian militias as they besieged the Palestinian camps embedded in Christian East Beirut one at a time and brought them down. 
The first was on January 18, 1976 when the heavily fortified Quarantina camp, located near the strategic Beirut harbor, was invaded about 1,000 PLO fighters and civilians were killed. Five the Palestinian PLO and al Saqqa forces retaliated by attacking the isolated defenseless Christian town of Timur about 20 miles south of Beirut on the coast, during the Timur massacre in which 1,000 Christian civilians were killed and 5,000 were sent fleeing north by boat, since all roads were blocked off. Six the Maronites retaliated with the invasion of the largest and strongest Palestinian refugee camp. Telephone al Zadar that same year. 7. Bachir, with his KRF militia units, also fought against the PLO and LNM militias at the Battle of the Hotels in central Beirut. The most important battle won by the Falange for the control of the hotel district was the fighting over the possession of the Holiday Inn, due to its important strategic location. Before that battle, the Holiday Inn had been occupied by the PLO. Eventually the PLO ended up occupying the Holiday Inn once again, while the Kotebe forces retreated to the facing Elton Hotel in what was known as the Hotel War. 12. The Lebanese forces was soon after established with an agreement that the direct military commander would be a Kotebe member and the vice commander an R member. Bachir led his troops in the infamous Hundred Days War in Lebanon in 1978 in which the Lebanese forces successfully resisted the Syrian shelling and attacking of eastern Beirut for about three months before an Arab brokered agreement forced the Syrians to end the siege. Syrians took high buildings such as Burj Rizka Krafai and Burj al Mar using snipers and heavy weapons against civilians. The soldiers stayed for 90 days. Another major clash took place near the Sodeco area in Akrifi where the Lebanese forces fought ferociously and led the Syrian army out of the Rizq building. At this time, Israel was the primary backer of the Lebanese Front's militia. In July 1980, following months of intra-Christian clashes between the Tigers, the militia of Dani, and the Phalangists, who by now were under the complete leadership of Badger Gamal, the Phalangists launched an operation in an attempt to stop the clashes within the Christian areas, and to unite all the Christian militias under Gamal's command. This operation resulted in a massacre of tens of Tigers members at the Marine Beach Resort in Sefra, 25 kilometers north of Beirut. Camille Shamoun's silence was interpreted as acceptance of Gamal's controls. 13. In 1981 at Zalan the the largest Christian town in the East, confronted one of the biggest battles both military and political between the Lebanese forces and the Syrian occupying forces. The Lebanese forces was able to confront them even though there was a big mismatch in military capabilities and was able to reverse the result of the Battle of 1981. This victory was due to the bravery of the inhabitants and 92 Lebanese Forces Soldiers LF Special Forces the Makawir sent from Beirut. The Syrian occupying forces used all kind of weapons heavy artillery, tanks, warplanes against a peaceful town, and they cut all kind of backup that may come from the mountain. Regardless of the very bad weather and heavy bombing, convoys were sent in the snow to Zal. Two Lebanese forces soldiers died on a hill due to bad weather and were found later holding each other. The Battle of Zal gave the Lebanese cause a new perspective in the international communities, and the victory was both military and diplomatic. It made the leadership of President Bashir Gamal much stronger because of his leadership and important role in this battle. The battle started in April 2, 1981 and finished with a ceasefire and Lebanese police were sent to Zal. The 92 Lebanese forces heroes returned to Beirut on July 1, 1981. 11. Israeli Invasion In 1982, Bachir met with Haini al Hassan, representative of the PLO and told him that Israel would enter and wipe them out. Bachir told him to leave Lebanon peacefully before it was too late. Hani left and no reply was given to Bachir. 14. Israel invaded Lebanon, 
arguing that a military intervention was necessary to root out PLO guerrillas from the southern part of the country. Israeli forces eventually moved towards Beirut and laid siege to the city, aiming to reshape the Lebanese political landscape and force the PLO out of Lebanon. By 1982, Israel had been the main supplier to the Lebanese forces, giving them assistance in weapons, clothing, and training. An official Israeli inquiry into events in Beirut estimated that when fully mobilized the Falange had 5,000 fighters of whom 2,000 were full-time. 15. After the PLO had been expelled from the country to Tunisia, in a negotiated agreement, Bachir Gamal became the youngest man to ever be elected as president of Lebanon. He was elected by the parliament in August. Most Muslim members of parliament boycotted the vote. On September 3, 1982, during the meeting, Bikin demanded that Bachir sign a peace treaty with Israel as soon as he took office in return of Israel's earlier support of Lebanese forces and he also told Bachir that the IDF will stay in South Lebanon if the peace treaty was not directly signed. Bachir was furious at Begin and told him that the Lebanese forces did not fight for seven years and that they did not sacrifice thousands of soldiers to free Lebanon from the Syrian army and the PLO so that Israel can take their place. The meeting ended in rage and both sides were not happy with each other. 16. Begin was reportedly angry at Bachir for his public denial of Israel's support. Bachir refused the immediate peace arguing that time is needed to reach consensus with Lebanese Muslims and the Arab nations. Bachir was quoted telling David Kimchi, the director general of the Israeli foreign ministry, few days earlier, please tell your people to be patient. I am committed to make peace with Israel, and I shall do it. But I need time, nine months, maximum one year. I need to mend my fences with the Arab countries, especially with Saudi Arabia, so that Lebanon can once again play its central role in the economy of the Middle East. 1718. In an attempt to fix the relations between Bachir and Begin, Ariel Sharon met secretly with Bachir and Bikfaya. In this meeting, they both agreed that, after 48 hours, the IDF will cooperate with the Lebanese army to force the Syrian army out of Lebanon. After that is done, the IDF would peacefully leave the Lebanese territory. Concerning the peace negotiation, Sharon agreed to give Bachir time to fix the internal conflicts before signing the negotiation. The next day, Begin's office issued a statement saying that the issues agreed upon between Bachir and Sharon were accepted. 19. Nine days before he was to take office, on September 14, 1982, Bachir was killed along with 25 others in a bomb explosion in the Kotaib headquarters in Akrafai. The attack was carried out by Habib Shartini, a member of the Syrian Social Nationalist Party SSNP, believed by many to have acted on instructions of the Syrian government of President Hafez al-Assad. 20 The next day, Israel moved to occupy the city, allowing Falangist members under Eli Hobeka's command to enter the centrally located Sabra and the Shatila refugee camp. A massacre followed, in which Falangists killed between 762 to 3,500 numbers disputed civilians, mostly Palestinians and Lebanese Shiites causing great international uproar. Many cite the massacre as revenge for the killing of Bachir Gamal and the countless massacres committed by the PLO against the Christian civilian population since 1975. The Amin Gamal years 1982-1988, after the Israeli invasion, the IDF troops settled in the Chauf and Ali Front Party militias, the Lebanese forces returned to the villages which had been occupied by the PSP for seven years. However, soon after, clashes broke out between the Lebanese forces and the Druze militias who had now taken over the districts. The main Druze militiamen came from the Progressive Socialist Party, led by Wali Jumblat, in alliance with the Syrian army and Palestinian militants. For months, 
The two fought what would later be known as the Mountain War, resulting in a large PSP victory. At the same time, the Lebanese forces troops also fought battles against the Palestinian and Druze militias and the Syrian troops east of the southern city of Sudan. The outcome was also a progressive Socialist Party victory and a contiguous Druze Chalf district with access to Lebanese seaports. Later in 1984, the PSP won decisive battles against the Lebanese army in the Sher region in the Inli district. The PSP then attacked further into Souk el Karb, a village held by the Lebanese army's 8th Mechanized Infantry Brigade commanded by then-Colonel Michel Owen. The attackers were fiercely pushed back as the American helped Owen by bombing the PSP from their navy. Internal power struggles After the death of Bachir, his brother Amin Gamal replaced him as president, and his cousin, Fadi Frem as commander of the Lebanese forces. The two had a frosty relationship, and in 1984, pressure from Amin led to Frem's replacement by Fouad Abu Nader. On March 12, 1985, Sumer Giajia, Eli Hobeka and Karim Bakarduni rebelled against Abu Nader's command, ostensibly to take the Lebanese forces back to its original path. The relationship between Giji and Hobeka soon broke down, however, and Hobeka began secret negotiations with the Syrians. On December 28, 1985, he signed the Tripartite Accord against the wishes of Gigi and most of the other leading Christian figures. Claiming that the Tripartite Accord gave Syria unlimited power in Lebanon, Gigi mobilized factions inside the Lebanese forces and on January 15, 1986, attacked Hobeka's headquarters in Carantina. Hobeka surrendered and fled, first to Paris and subsequently to Damascus, Syria. He then moved to Zaw with tens of his fighters where he prepared for an attack against East Beirut. On September 27, 1986, Hobeka's forces tried to take over the Akrafa neighborhood of Beirut but the Lebanese forces of Gigi's command held them back. This failed attempt by Hobeka was the last episode of internal struggles in East Beirut during Amin Gamal's mandate. As a result, the Lebanese forces led by Jijia were the only major force on ground. During two years of frail peace, Jijia launched a drive to re-equip and reorganize the Lebanese forces. He also instituted a social welfare program in areas controlled by Jijia's party. The Lebanese forces also cut its relations with Israel and emphasized relations with the Arab states, mainly Iraq but also Saudi Arabia. Jordan, and Egypt. The Elimination War 1988-1990, two rival governments contended for recognition following Amin Gamal's departure from the presidency in September 1988, one a mainly Christian government and the other a government of Muslims and Lebanese leftists. The Lebanese forces initially supported the military Christian government led by General Michel Owen, the commander of the Lebanese army. However, clashes erupted between the Lebanese forces and the Lebanese army under the control of Michel Owen on February 14, 1989. These clashes were stopped, and after a meeting in BKERKE, the Lebanese forces handed the national ports which it controlled to Owen's government under pressure from the Lebanese National Army citation needed. The Lebanese forces initially supported Owen's liberation war against the Syrian army, but then agreed to the TAF agreement, which was signed by the Lebanese deputies on October 24, 1989 in Saudi Arabia and demanded an immediate ceasefire. Owen's main objection to the TAF agreement was its vagueness as to Syrian withdrawal from the country. He rejected it vowing that he would not sign over the country. Fierce fighting in East Beirut broke out between the Lebanese forces and the Lebanese army under Michel Owen after the Lebanese army, under orders of Michel Owen, began stopping and arresting members of the Lebanese forces. 21-22 These events led to the Elimination War on January 31, 1990. 
The war continued until the defeat and exile of Aoun to France in August 1990. During the war, the Lebanese forces made major strides and victories including the capture of many of the army's encampments, barracks, and units. 23. Lebanese Forces Party 1990% The Second Republic 1990-2005 After Aoun surrendered on October 13, 1990 to the rival Syrian-backed President Hawawi, Jijia was offered ministerial posts in the new government. He refused several times, because he was opposed to Syrian interference in Lebanese affairs, and his relationship with the new government deteriorated. On March 23, 1994, the Lebanese government headed by Rafik Hariri ordered the dissolution of the Lebanese forces. 24 On April 21, 1994, Jia was arrested on charges of setting a bomb in the church in Zouk, of instigating acts of violence, and of committing assassinations during the Lebanese civil war. Although he was acquitted of the first charge, Jia was subsequently arrested and sentenced to life imprisonment on several different counts, including the assassination of former Prime Minister Rashid Karami in 1987. He was incarcerated in solitary confinement, with his access to the outside world severely restricted. Amnesty International criticized the conduct of the trials and demanded Jia's release and Jia supporters argued that the Syrian-controlled Lebanese government had used the alleged crimes as a pretext for jailing Jia and banning an anti-Syrian party. Many members of the Lebanese forces were arrested and brutally tortured in the period of 1993-1994. At least one died in Syrian custody and many others were severely injured. 25. In 1998, a group of ex-military persons in the Lebanese forces, was alleged to have conducted military operation against the Syrian military intelligence in Lebanon. The group was mainly formed of elite Lebanese forces called Sadim, 26 on June 19, 1998. A field operation revealed the identity of some persons of this group, one of which was a Lebanese army captain, Camille Yard. Some other names published in the newspapers then were 27. One Nemzid Saddam 28 unit, deceased on June 19, 1998. Two Georgia Dib Saddam 28 unit, deceased on June 19, 1998. Three Fadi Chahud Saddam 28 unit, deceased in August 2000. Four Nam Talamushalam Saddam 28 unit, managed to escape Lebanon condemned to death, allegedly one of the resistance network organizers. 5. Abdo Salwani Saddam 26 unit, managed to escape Lebanon, condemned to death, allegedly one of the resistance network organizers. After the Cedar Revolution, the Lebanese forces was an active participant in the Cedar Revolution of 2005, when popular protests and international pressure following the assassination of former Prime Minister Rafik al-Hariri combined to force Syria out of Lebanon. In the subsequent parliamentary election held in May and June, the Lebanese forces formed part of the Rafik Hariri martyr list, which also included the Future Movement, Popular Socialist Party, the Reformed Falange Party, and other anti-Syrian political groups as well as a brief tactical alliance with Amal and Hezbollah. The tactical alliance with Hezbollah and Amal would soon end. These majority parties and movements would subsequently form the anti-Syrian March 14th alliance, which stood opposed to the March 8th coalition backed by Hezbollah, Amal and the Free Patriotic Movement led by General Michel Aoun who had returned to Lebanon. The Lebanese forces were able to win six out of the eight MPs that were nominated throughout the various regions of the country. Nevertheless, the elections proved to be very significant because for the first time, supporters of the party were freely able to participate in the election process. Following the party's new political gains, Sumer Gijia was freed on July 18, 2005, after Parliament decided to amend all the charges he formally faced. Since Gigi is released from prison, the Lebanese forces have been rebuilding much of their former image. 
Some of these works include reorganizing its members and their families, reopening political facilities, and re-establishing their main presence among the Christians of Lebanon. In addition to rebuilding their image, the Lebanese forces have also been attempting to reclaim former privately funded facilities, which were seized by the Syrian-backed government. Currently, the Lebanese forces have also been striving to reclaim their rights to the Lebanese Broadcasting Corporation, which was initiated by the party in the mid-1980s. Since the emancipation of the party's main leader, Sumer Giyajia, the party has gained new popularity among the Christian population throughout all of Lebanon. In addition, the Lebanese forces have also been able to attain a great deal of popularity amongst the younger generation, as evidenced by the annual student elections in Lebanese colleges. The Lebanese forces, along with their other March 14 allies, made additional gains in the elections geared towards the professional bodies of engineers, doctors, lawyers, and even teachers. Present political representation, the Lebanese forces held 8 out of the 128 seats at the Lebanese parliament after the general elections of 2009, and were represented in the Sinera government, formed in July 2005, by the Minister of Tourism Joseph Sarkis, and then in the second Sinera government, formed in July 2008, by the Minister of Justice Ibrahim Nayar and the Minister of Environment Antoine Karam. They are a Christian party within the March 14th bloc, an anti-Syrian movement. The Lebanese forces and its main political representatives strive to re-establish the many Christian rights, which were significantly lessened during Syria's occupation of Lebanon, specifically from 1990 to 2005. Some of the Lebanese forces' other main objectives include formulating a just electoral law, which would enable the Christian population to be represented fairly in local and parliamentary elections. The party has also stressed the idea of reaffirming the powers formally endowed through the Lebanese president before being lessened in the Tanif Agreement. Bashir Gamal Militia Founder, Sumer Giyajia Current Leader and Founder, Current Deputies, Georges Adwin elected in 2005, re-elected in 2009. Eli Kairouz elected in 2005, re-elected in 2009. Antoine Zara elected in 2005, re-elected in 2009. Fadi Karim elected in 2012, won the by-elections in Korea after the death of MP Fard Habib, C. Frida Giyajia wife of Samir Giyajia elected in 2005, re-elected in 2009. Tony Abikater elected in 2009. Joseph Malouf elected in 2009. Chant Jinjinin elected in 2009. Recently, in 2014 the party announced 26 candidates for parliamentary election all across Lebanon but the election didn't take place. More than one candidate was announced in the following districts two candidates in Bsheri, two candidates in Baabda, two candidates in Zal and two candidates in Jezin two candidates in Zgorda and five candidates in Beirut. The Lebanese forces also announced candidates in Kesrawan, Metn, Kura, Bertrun, Akar, Tripoli, Balbek Kermel, Ailey, Chauf, Tripoli, and West Bekaa.